What's going on, everybody? Pastor Brandon here, and you are about to come face to face with the Word of God. We are in an amazing series entitled 7359, and it's talking about the power and the birth of the church. And we're also casting some vision specifically for this great campus. So you're about to see a message that I preached entitled uh, The Blueprint, uh, The Pattern, however you want to do it. It all means the same thing. Make sure that you log in, make sure you're paying attention to this, get your notes out. God's going to speak to us in a great, great way. I'll see you after the service. Exodus chapter 25. I'm actually going to read two verses um, in two different spots. I'm going to Exodus 25 and 9, and then I'm going to jump to Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5. I'm in Exodus chapter 25, verse 9. Here's what it says. You must build this tabernacle and its furnishings exactly everybody say exactly everybody say exactly exactly according to the pattern that i will show you that's exodus 25 and 9. now i'd like you to go to hebrews chapter 8 verse 5. hebrews chapter 8 well let's do verse 4. hebrews chapter 8 verse 4 for if he were on earth he would not be a priest since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law. Verse 5. Who serve the copy and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make or build the tabernacle. For he said, see that you make things according to to the pattern shown to you on the mountain. For the next few moments, I'm going to preach a message to you entitled the pattern, the pattern, the pattern. We need to understand that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to build his church. Let's just start right there. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to build his church. Um, I believe that the construction of the church was accomplished once he looked Peter in the face and began to give out some of the information necessary to know that upon this rock, not Peter, uh, Peter's name means stone, that's a small rock. He is talking about the greater rock of revelation of who Jesus Christ is. The beautiful thing about that particular uh, conversation, and I'm not going to get too much into that because I'm going to preach it later. The beautiful thing about that conversation is that God revealed that revelation to Peter. And there are some things about Jesus that you are not going to know unless God reveals it to you. And no matter how potent the testimony is of the person sitting next to you, there are some things that God reveals about Jesus himself. Here is the thing that you need to know the most. God will not contradict his word in revealing Jesus. I'd like to suggest to you that it would not be biblical for you to say that you found the Lord in a bowl of jello, that we can't find that in the word of God. And you, you'll say, well, God can do anything. He can, but he's not going to contradict his word to meet your preferences. Now, that's a whole nother conversation, and, but I'd like to suggest to you that God will not contradict what he has said in the 66 books of the word of God in order to meet your preferences in hopes of participation. God is committed more to his word than he is your comfort. God is committed more to his word than being on your side when there is a dispute. God is more committed to his word than he is to you being wealthy. The word of God stands the test of life and tragedies that come with it. So the Lord Jesus Christ is going to build his church. He is. And the basic concept of a wise master builder is one that is not supremely creative. If you are going to be a wise master builder like the Apostle Paul suggested that he was, it is an individual willing to follow God's patterns. God is a God of patterns. He is a God of systems. He is a God of structure. Before God does anything, there is a strategic plan in heaven 
that he is going to follow. Not because God does not know his own plans, but so that men and women on earth can accurately and integrally participate with what God is doing. God is not of the mindset to enlist a participant in his great scheme of plans and then let you rework what you feel is right according to what he wants to do. God is not in desperate need of helpers to come alongside him and hold up his arms to make sure that his purpose and his bleeding son received the war reward of the suffering that took place. No, God has plans and God has structure and patterns so that we don't carnally slip into ambition trying to create a version of the kingdom of God that God is not required to bless. This is the dilemma, not just for the, the individual who is wanting to start a great ministry via Facebook Live. No, this is the dilemma and the temptation that reaches out into the quote unquote church. Every church is not his church. Now, before you say amen too loud, I'd like to suggest that we not go on an inspector gadget detective trying to find out which one is which. No, no, no. Jesus already gave us very clear indication how you can know every tree bears the fruit thereof. And all you have to do is just do a fruit inspection because it would be quite contradictory. I'm not at Pentecost yet, but it'd be quite contradictory to say that you are full of the precious Holy Ghost and you don't have the fruit of the spirit. A hikatamba is not enough to be indication that you are filled with the free gift. Oh no. One of the indications that you have been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost is the fruit that your life should bear. Which means if you are filled with the fire, you should be kind on some level. I know it's quiet because there is a weird, ungodly definition specifically for prophets that say that if I am a prophet, then I must equate my meanness to my prophetic prowess. But I'd like to suggest to you that the power of the Holy Ghost does not make you unbearable relationally. It's quiet. You should be the kind of individual that others are excited about being around not because of your personality but because of his presence I am not organically a nice person but you say Pastor Brandon is nice and I chuckle because you think I'm nice because of my personality no I'm nice because I'm filled with the Holy Ghost Lord help me I said I'm this way because I've been baptized in fire I said I'm this way because I lifted my hands and I went to a meeting one night it's quiet and my heart wasn't right but something got a hold of me and I looked in the word of God and I said now that I've been changed how should I treat the people that you love more than me yeah I don't love them like you do how should I treat them and he said if you're gonna be one of mine then you got to treat them how I treat them I don't cuss them out I don't talk bad about them i don't gossip with gabriel about the sins that they have committed as far as the east is from the west i love those and this is how i treat them so you can't be filled with god's power and not treat his people right amen look at your neighbor and say let's have church let's have church yeah let's have church yeah 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 and so god has a pattern everybody say god has a pattern he's got a pattern but the uniqueness of every place where God's, pa God's pattern is universal. You hear me? It's universal. Which means every church that's his church should reveal the pattern of God's original intent in the place where we gather to minister and express the love of God. Now the reason why you see it different from house to house, from church to church, is the scaffolding. The scaffolding. The, the, it, this is the temporary structure that comes alongside of a building to provide its uniqueness for all to see.
This is how different worship songs vary from church to church. But the object is that we worship with music. That's biblical. This is how you can find the preaching of the gospel. Please hear me. Even if you enjoy the stylistic preaching of your favorite, whoever it is, the main goal is the book being revealed to you so that Jesus can come closer. The different cadences, style, pace, the way that they do it, if some do it in F flat or B sharp, none of that matters. All of that is for the sensation that we feel that connects our brains to the conversation so that our spirit man can find the fruit and apply it. But to have a favorite based off of style and then miss the substance is how we create many gods lowercase g i don't have time because we got a whole lot of gods but they're the wrong g amen this is how we we erect little gods and then say in drunken ignorance i feel god more through that one well i feel god when i hear the accuracy of the word of god being produced you don't have to be my favorite you don't have to take me to starbucks you don't have to invite me over none of those things are going to move my flesh you want to know why i am dependent on the word of god come here this is going to be an old generation but it's the b-i-b-l-e that's the book for me yeah i stand alone on the word of god the b-i-b-l-e lord help me if we could just get back to the bible we would then see that the blueprints that god is giving us would begin to yield fruit it is impossible for god to establish his hand and the miraculous on things that he did not ask for in his church it is impossible for zion and nyla and noah to receive monetary blessing from me and disrespect my wife lord help me jesus you can't talk bad to your mama and then walk up to me after you broke my pattern in my house and then expect me to pay your cell phone bill you are about to be on green from here on out because i refuse to bless what you willfully ignored and destroyed it doesn't work like that and when god doesn't do something for us it's possible we broke a pattern look at your neighbor and say respect the pattern let me give you some patterns god has a pattern Woo. god has a pattern god god has a pattern god has a pattern and scriptures show us that the lord god has a pattern for his church jesus christ is the architect he is the wise master builder you can find that in matthew 16 and 18 you will see that jesus christ is the head of the church lord help me jesus christ is the head of the church and if you put another head next to his you got a monster yeah which means you cannot equate obedience to your pastor on the same level as obedience to the good shepherd is quiet you cannot have more loyalty to me standing in a green suit than you do to the man that was clothed in blood no you cannot have more excitement about sitting in a favorite seat and then forget we've been seated in heavenly places you can put me in the basement you can make me sit on the steps you can make me stand for all i care it don't matter to me all i know is that jesus is at the right hand of the father forever making intercession and when the man prays i can have a seat he went through hell for me to have a seat it doesn't matter i won't break the pattern i won't break the pattern i won't i won't break the pattern jesus is is the master architect that word pattern is defined uh, in the dictionary as a model proposed for imitation help me a model proposed for imitation it, it's a shape that has been cut for a cloth it's it's a part of a, of a cloth it's a part of a pattern for an old, old overall outfit it is the figure or the style of execution please hear me we have got to stop this embarrassing fussing and fighting over people that are copying us lord help me you just as angry stole it from me 
mind first the Lord I was just talking to my wife the other day and I, I had saw that a very famous uh, man of God had posted something that I felt like the Lord placed in my belly I, and I told her I said hey girl did you see that I said maybe God shared it with him too and she was like no nah, I don't know maybe not maybe he heard it from you and I said listen to me honey he's more popular than me so as long as the God thought gets out to more people I don't care who gets the credit you want to know why I took the content from somebody first I spent time with the Holy Ghost which means it's his to begin with and if you keep getting mad over people sounding like you preaching like you singing like you and you call it stealing uh, where did you get the content from you didn't come up with it you didn't find it there was inspiration upon your life whatever happened to freely I received is quiet and freely I will give God give us the kind of minister that is not intimidated about somebody else preaching what we heard quicker and better and faster father pull down this ungodly social media warfare that only makes us troll to see who stole my God may we come into divine significance that what's for me is for me and I got an obligation to minister to the audience in front of me nobody stole from you we create the steal narrative in hopes that somebody would know I am a creative original and I'd like to suggest to you that if something is quote unquote stolen from you could not the source of creativity breathe something in you that could not be duplicated ever again okay amen so god has a pattern not only god had a pattern but noah had a pattern yeah noah had a pattern genesis 6 14 you have to read the scriptures on your own genesis 6 14 through 16 you will see that Noah was given a fashion. He was given something that he was supposed to make. The Hebrew word for fashion means a verdict, a judgment, a sentence, a formal decree, a divine law, divine style. Hallelujah. He was given something. He was told to create an ark. The ark was to be built, watch this, to fashion what God had shown him. The ark was to be built as a fashion, as a judgment, as a sentence, as a conversation hallelujah when God gives you a pattern it is his way of having a conversation with the earth yeah everything that we build unto the glory of God is a continued conversation that ark that Noah was building was God's preaching it was God's plan to try to convict the hearts of those that had so backslidden that they no longer saw the need to believe in Noah was God. God was preaching through the building, but he cannot preach if you tamper with the pattern. God didn't say just build me an ark and do it however you feel like. No. God looked at Noah and said you've got to build it with this type of wood. You've got to build it with these types of planks. You've got to build it this big, this wide. You've got to have these type of inhabitants in it. Why? Because God only blesses what you obey by faith. Say amen. Man. God only blesses what you obey by faith and of course Noah is looking at the construction of the ark because God didn't give him a picture he gave him steps Lord help me a lot of times we want a picture and God said you'll know what to do after you complete the last step and if you are stagnant right now in the things that God has called you to build I would ask you to examine your last steps and Noah comes to the construction of the ark and all of a sudden there is a pattern standing in front of us this noahic pattern is a very unique one because noah is building an ark and there will be divine salvation that is a foreshadow to that pattern the ark represents jesus that those that would be willing to get inside are admitting that they are in need of a savior this is how you get in the body of christ 
because on the outside of the ark of safety the blood of Jesus the body of Christ there is sin and calamity destined to swallow us whole so when God is telling Noah build according to the pattern it's not about the flood only it's about the flood of sin that is going to drown humanity God's patterns must be followed with unique intentionality not just Noah's pattern for the ark how about sacrificial altars sacrificial altars now this is important for you and I to understand because in sacrificial altars we find out that God lays his commands on altars so that there can be a meeting place for God's people God says don't use any tools for these altars use your hands I want you to create these altars I want you to construct these altars make them in these specific places in these specific moments for this specific use why because altars point to the cross of Calvary so it was that Jesus the sacrificial lamb laid down on the altar of the cross and was offered up to us for us to God for the remission of our sins hear me it is important that those in the book of Exodus build altars according to God's plan because if you don't build according to his plan you alter the overall vision here is how people come to church and then don't see Jesus because we have become intoxicated with crowds and not the call if I have to change the pattern of what God said are his non-negotiables to get them coming then they will not come for him they will come for the creativity of building a corporation Lord help me but I got bad news for you you are not sitting in a corporation no you are not sitting in a business plan you are not sitting in a CEO's office oh no you are sitting in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ yeah even those chairs and even these walls this this is just scaffolding you're sitting in it is the content that makes her the church the last man to go against God's pattern Trav was a man named Moses Moses got frustrated and God said don't mess up my pattern Moses walks up to the rock and he strikes it instead of speaking to it God said man I got to kill you for that because the son of man can only be struck in one time yeah that rock is supposed to represent Jesus you are not supposed to strike it again and if I allow that pattern to continue forward then there will be an altered pattern for my son on the cross this is how purposes die when you decide to alter the original agreement you and God made look at your neighbor and say don't break the pattern the nation of Israel she is called the church in the wilderness and the whole ordering of the camp and the tribes and the priests and the sanctuaries and the camps and the tithes and the offering all of this is a pattern and a principle about God's people on how to interact with him all of this was positioned in the shape of the cross and it gathered they gathered in the name of the Lord all according to the commandments that God gave them not only that the tabernacle of Moses the tabernacle of Moses this tabernacle was an opportunity it's it's a pattern if you will of how we can come in and make sacrifice that pattern has to be uniquely followed because specifically if you're going into the holy of holies and you are a priest in the old covenant and you did not atone for your sin yeah if you did not make sacrifice if you go in unclean and you walk into the holy of holies holies God in his wrath not because he's mad at the individual he loves the person but he sees all of that sin and because of that sin dishonoring the pattern of how the man said it's got to be done in the old covenant God said I got to strike you dead this is why the garment that the priest would wear it would have bells on the bottom yeah not just bells on the bottom but they would tie a rope around their waist because they were nervous 
priests. They didn't know if the priest took the time to sanctify himself before he went in the presence of the Lord. They needed to make sure that if something happens and you and God have a disagreement, we not going in there to pull you out because we have not been ordained to go back there to see what you and God are talking about now. It's getting ready to get upset. Ain't nobody going to pray for me now. This is why you got to be careful on how you check leaders. Say amen. You want to know why? In the old covenant, they knew I can't just walk upon you because I'll break God's pattern. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at Miriam. Yeah. Miriam tried that. She said, Mo, I'm sick of you. You contradict your laws. You married outside your race. And you the one that set up the law. And Moses is stuttering. And said, I, 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 I just fell in love. And the Holy Ghost said, man, Mo, don't say nothing else. Miriam and Aaron, step outside. Let's talk about this. I talked to Moses face to face. And you other prophets, I talked to in visions and dreams. Why in the world were you not nervous to check somebody I call friend? I said, Moses was my friend, not y'all. And you by now, the fact that you had the audacity to run up on Mo like that, get up out of this camp and take this leprosy in your bag with you. And unless Moses comes to me on behalf of your sickness, I ain't taking it off. And Mo said, come on, God, I love him. That's my sister. That's my protector, Mo. Take it off. He said, all right, I'm going to take it off, but they got to stay out there a little while because I don't play about the pattern. Yeah. This is where we find an unusual opportunity with these priests with the bell bottoms on. If they went into the presence of the Lord and there was no sound, I'm nervous about priests that don't make a sound. Don't attribute it to my ethnicity. Don't attribute it to that's just the way I am. Quiet, introvert, whatever. I don't care. If you have been anointed to be a priest, there should come some kind of sound that comes from your life when you enter into the presence of the holy of holies they tied a rope around his waist and if the bell stopped moving they started dragging and they would drag that priest out of the presence of the Lord because you ought not come into the presence of the Lord not making some type of indication that the only reason why I'm breathing is because your power is heavy that whole movement of the bells went with their steps and it was a prophetic announcement I'm only breathing and making a sound because you put some warmth in my body look at your neighbor say make a sound hurry up make a sound I'm not a priest read your Bible we are kings and priests a holy generation I'm scared hallelujah of a quiet church I will not let you redefine the patterns of the Lord Jesus Christ the noise is in order the praise is is in order the worship is in order intercession is in order tears are in order we will not change the definition of the man's house throw your head back and scream I won't change it, won't change it. I'm almost done he has a pattern and all throughout the tabernacle I won't give it to you all there's furnishings there's there's all types of things, brazen altars and candlesticks and all types of wonderful things that God ordered for the pattern. Then there's a pattern of the Ark of the Covenant. The glory of God. There, there is a pattern. And, and this article was constituted, it was, it was the centerpiece of it all. It's, it's what made the Holy of Holies holy. Yeah. Th this Ark of the Covenant, they, they could strap that Ark of the Covenant on shoulders and when they stepped into water, when they stepped into this, this, this gigantic flood, every step they took with the glory on their shoulders was a step on dry ground. You've got to hear the the principle and then employ the pattern. Well, all that means is I'm not telling you to go in Lake Michigan and start walking with one of them little boxes on your shoulders. Uh-uh, don't do it. But what I am telling you is that all of the floods in your life when you carry glory, can I tell you, I'm going to just tell you the secret sauce. If you like me or if you don't, it's all good. I still love you. But what is unique about Brandon Clack is that I carry some glory. That's it. It ain't got nothing to do with the cadence of my voice it ain't got nothing to do with support it ain't got 
nothing to do with backroom conversations no I told the Lord I want to carry your glory you can drop me off at any time of day and any time of night and if you're anybody with me or nobody with me and if you put a microphone in my hand and if you put a Bible in front of me and you let me start talking a little while all of a sudden the room will get black and I will see the one that my soul loves and I'll hide behind the cross and all of a sudden the glory will come in not as a catchphrase here come God no not as a catchphrase but unto conviction yeah that's what the glory does the glory comes as a sign of conviction that I want to come close or I'm going to run away and I want to be closer to his power than I ever want to outrun his accountability the ark of the covenant it was a relationship between the glory of God and his people and and there were some men that broke the pattern of God and I hollered it once but I'll tell it to you again these these men they had decided that they were going to put the ark on some animals. Yeah. They, they were going to delegate glory woo, to those that were not supposed to carry it. Yeah. You don't put the glory on an oxen. But they assumed that it was too heavy. And they put it on that oxen. And all of a sudden, it started rocking. It didn't start rocking because the road was bad. It started rocking because the oxen can't handle it. No. The oxen were not called to carry the weight of that assignment. Assignment. Yeah, and if you put the wrong assignment on the wrong beast of burden, that thing gonna rock and shake. This is why you got to have spirit-led leadership in the Lord's church. I know you ain't gonna pray for me. Hey Amen. Christabel, pray for me, honey. You got to have spirit-led leadership in the Lord's church. You want to know why? Because if things get topsy-turvy, it is not a sign that the season was wrong. It's a sign that who's carrying the glory is in the wrong assignment. I'm going to leave it alone. And they put that, that glory on them animals. And them animals could not handle the weight of that assignment. And Uzziah, Uzzah decided, I'm going to put my hand out and steady the glory. You cannot assist God by trying to change his pattern. Here comes the rebuke. Oftentimes when we think we're helping God, we are changing the definitions of what he wanted to begin with. I only wanted to do what I thought was right. I was only just defending my church. Who told you that God needs help defending his church? Who told you that you need to pick up your sword? The last man to pick up a sword to defend the birth of the church was Peter. And Jesus looked at him and said, man, put your stuff away. Do you not know that I am the two-edged sword? I can't get no help. Do you not know that I am the great commander of the angelic armies and the host of the kingdom of God? I don't need you to cut off an ear to try to protect me from a pattern that was established before you got here those men put that glory on that oxen and it stumbled and God killed a man for trying to change the pattern he's serious about the pattern and God laid out these details for the ark of the covenant to approach worship for the children of Israel nothing was arranged out of their own minds nothing was arranged you cannot put something in that box that God didn't ask for Woo. you cannot put something in that box that God didn't ask for I want to put Moses' rod that didn't but that budded you cannot go and find a random stick and say well that rod is cool but now we need another one God will kill you for that and I'm not talking about oh Lord God gonna come and kill us new covenant what pastor talking about I'm not talking about that kind of killing but some of y'all's purposes are dead and you trying to fight the devil and God said I can't let that thing live because you are disobedient trying to rewrite the purpose all of a sudden here the glory of God and the ark of the covenant is represented so that God's house can be fully furnished in the proper place under divine order look at your neighbor and say get in order Lord I'm cussing in church now look at your neighbor and say get in order come on tell them get in order come on tell them get in order if you are the Lord's prophet then get in order he gave gifts to men for the edification of the church which means prophetic gifts find their most potent power in the local church I know just look right at me if you are an elder say amen you were not called to be an elder from the couch on your house 
you were called to be an elder in the Lord's church yeah I am committed to the pattern not the personality what you are going to experience in the month of May is I'm going to grab personality by the throat and choke it out I'm going to choke it till it don't move I'm going to choke it till it won't squirm I'm going to choke it until the preferences bleed out yeah I'm going to choke it until the excuses bleed out I'm going to choke it until it can't squirm or go any further I want the pattern over the personality I've been hurt wounded talked about and mistreated discarded and thrown away underused and not cared for the only suggestion I can make is welcome to Christianity it sounds like you are following the pattern of Jesus Christ he is the chief cornerstone that the builders rejected if we become personality intoxicated we will start redefining God's pattern for his house and God will send series and conversations like this so that conviction can grip the heart or God will come knocking at the door I don't know if I, uh, I was talking to Brandon yesterday and he was saying, I, ad I admire how you treat God's people. And I said, look me in my face and never forget this. I am afraid of God. I told him, did I not tell you to your face? I looked at him, I said, don't, don't marvel at me. I almost said, fool, you know, don't marvel. I said, I am afraid of God. I do not want God to have to invade a dream. I don't want God to walk up to me in his word or worse I don't want to stand before him bare and naked having to give an account for why I did not follow his pattern that stuff scares me I call it the fear of the Lord I want to carefully I, I stagger at standing behind this podium. My knees quake because I don't want to misrepresent his pattern. Even if it means I'm not popular. Even if it means I get called into meetings. Even if it means that I have to explain my positioning. I say, Holy Spirit, if you will stand upon these words, I promise not to change the pattern. The New Testament church has patterns. And it's, it's not just prophets and elders. Those are the first things on my mind. I just met with them the most recent. Amen. It's not just elders and prophets. It's worship teams. It's bands. It's the media ministry. It's, it's every aspect of the church. It cannot run according to what you think is best. It cannot. I, I, I had a word. If that word does not match this word or the vision I'm sorry I'm knocking everything on working here if that word does not match this word and the overall vision of God's house either God didn't give it to you or it's not time to say it Lord I don't have time to tell you truth has timing but everything you hear is not for public consumption I just want to let them know. I will let them know. I will let them. Listen to me. And, and your dishonorable trying to share the truth will not be received because truth has time. And you don't like it? Then go ask God, why didn't he send Jesus right after Adam made a mistake? Is he the truth or not? The, the fact that he didn't send Jesus right away and we got Noah and we got Moses and we got Ezekiel and we got Isaiah and we got Hosea and we go down the list of all of these people pointing to truth it didn't show up right away when the time is not prepared to receive your truth will start fights 
I know the truth. Whatever happened to the prayer closet? Whatever happened, I don't want to break nothing. Of you going into a secret place, my God, of you going into a secret place and you deciding that this is going to be the place, Lord, my stomach is upset. I'm not sure if things are being done the way you want them to, Father, but instead of making a mess in public, I'm going to hide in private. Oh, God, touch my church. Oh, God, touch the leaders. Oh, God, grab the prophets. I don't understand and I don't agree, but you didn't tell me to uproot myself. So on my my face I will declare your word Lord I thank you that I'm not praying witchcraft prayers trying to make somebody fall in love with me that's not ready to promote me if this is where you like me if this is where you want me I'll pray behind though I can't get no help why so I hope conviction grabs you by the nap of the neck and instead of complaining you get back to praying look at your neighbor and say stop complaining stop complaining come on tell your neighbor stop complaining stop complaining you're too visible get into the secret place of the most high Woo! and abide under the shadow look at your neighbor and say stop complaining and if it don't look like it's time to come out yet take your hips right back into your closet and say oh God I stretch my hands to you day number two it's confusion they gossiping they complaining I don't even know if you still go here Lord but because you didn't uproot me somebody's got to stay on the wall until it's time to come out in front Look at your neighbor and say, let's have church. Let's have church. Come on, tell them, let's have church. Let's not change it. Look at your neighbor and say, is it safe yet? Is it safe yet? It looks like it's almost safe. And if it's not safe yet, take your hips into another closet and say, Lord, before I dishonor your pattern, I will stay in the closet and declare your word. Still kind of look like they're mistreating people. I'm staying in the closet. Still don't look like things are settled yet. I'm staying in the closet. Closets don't leave the house before offended people do. The Lord does not dismiss you from an assignment while you carry fresh offense. And if you just had a fight and now your season is up, I could tell you hate prayer. Look at your neighbor and say, it's a New Testament church. These are not my preferences. The truth of the matter is, if I were in charge of the church, I'd let you leave offended. I would. You wouldn't have to go to your brother. You could go straight to God and when you feel better, goodbye. Amen. I understand. But it's not my church. And I can't change the pattern because I'm drunk for popularity. Your weird need to be needed is forcing you to disobey. Honestly, it's an indictment to God that he's not enough. And that you curse the circle that he put around you. Now you know why Joseph's brothers tried to fight him so bad. This ungodly sibling rivalry that makes men and women kill each other in hopes that the father sees them. I wish Zion would hurt Noah in hopes to spend more, I almost threw this water, in hopes to spend more time with me. That does not promote a healthy house girl if you only come and talk to me when your brother is in trouble and you think that that's our encounter lord i'm about to get it let me in this time to go play the goodbye music amen i have got to be more of an influence on my children that I look like a quality conversation in peacetime like I look like in wartime. 
God has a pattern. And I want to have church. Not the kind of church you're thinking of. I want to follow his patterns to the point of a well done. Does that even matter to people anymore? <laughs> well done. Ask me to preach or don't ask me to preach. Whatever, I want well done. Ask me to lead the song or don't ask me. I don't care. I just want to hear well done. The New Testament church today is God's ark. I'm going to tie it together for you. The New Testament church is the ark of the covenant. It is Moses' tabernacle. It is Noah's ark. The New Testament church, here it comes, fulfills all sacrifices and festivals. Check me, Ricky, and see if I'm wrong. Occasions and spiritual fulfillment in Jesus. 1 Peter 2, verse 5 and 9. What I just told you is, Jesus is the fulfillment of it all. All the feasts, all the sacrifices, all of the altars, the Ark of the Covenant. We can't find the Ark of the Covenant. You watch so much Indiana Jones. Jesus is the fulfillment of it. And Jesus said, not me. This was his decision, not mine. Hey, Pete. Upon this rock, I'd like to build a church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against this church. The definition of this church should be able to resist and defeat whatever comes out of hell's gates. That only works if it's his church. And if he didn't build it, of course hell is going to risen. Can I just give you this and I'm done. I'm done. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. He did not say that sin won't try to come in the church. I'd have to teach you that hell and sin are two different things. Because I can come to him as I am. And then by the pattern of the word of God, we've got to trust the pattern so much that we don't manipulate someone's sanctification process. Because we don't like the way they walk. I'm going to make you real mad now. We don't like the way they talk. We don't like who they're currently dating. We don't like their desires. Because I can't guarantee you that I can lay hands on you and your desires go away. My job is to preach the accuracy of the pattern to the glory of God that the pattern gets in your principles. And then when you go to participate in whatever your thing is, there is now a resistor called a pattern that stands between you and Jack Daniels or you and Billy Ray. Oh, I don't know if Billy Ray's or forget Billy Ray. You know what I mean? you and Susie or you and whoever and when you go to get relief the pattern says come here Khalil I feel a little illustrated sermon on me amen you try to get to all of it behind me the pattern says hold on before you try listen to me please this is why you accept Jesus now here's the problem you have the right to move the pattern out of the way and the pattern will say, man, go on ahead and grab it, I guess. And you can choose. You can choose. Today, choose Jesus. It wasn't just Noah. It wasn't just Moses. It wasn't just the Ark of the Covenant. But you're standing in a pattern. 7359 is a pattern that God placed in the heart of Chicago to be a beacon of hope and light. This address has been uniquely set apart for the glory of God and it precedes all nations. There was a man. 
named the Apostle Hinton who stood on this stage before I was born and proclaimed the pattern of God to this city. You are sitting in a place whose walls know miracles. You walked upstairs that God walked up 25 years ago. The very foundation of it, but not just this building, but this church was built on a pattern of the apostolic and the prophetic. And there was a founding apostle who in the basement of this building had the first world changers through the persuasion of his obedience. Something about 7359 has become a blueprint for God. And before we break the pattern, I'll lay down and say, God, take your church back. Lift your hands. We there now, Reese. We declare now as intercessors that, Father, that your pattern would not be manipulated. We come in divine agreement before corporate prayer. And as a congregation, we say, long live the church. We, whoa, we don't want to change the things you've decided, but keep the doors of this church open not open to personality not open to our preference but open to the presence of God for we labor as the middle man declaring that eyes will walk down these aisles and they will say surely I have found the son of God let them not be attracted to our gifts and skill sets but let the pattern be bigger than the personality the pattern is bigger than the person Personality. It's bigger than Clack. It's bigger than Stevenson. It's bigger than the elders. It's bigger than the prophets. It's bigger than all nations. It's bigger than the Ahan. Let the what's wrong? Let the pattern, the pattern, let the church of the Lord Jesus Christ arise in great strength. And we will not cause her to be embarrassed. We will not embarrass the church. We will not fight. We will not cuss. We will not curse. We will not have hexes, witchcraft, manipulation. It is your church. I am a proud member of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been engrafted into the body of Christ. I'm in now. I'm in now. I'm in now. I'm in now. I intercede for my brothers. I intercede for my brothers Apostle John Hannah I intercede for him. yeah he's my brother he serves the kingdom of God and we declare that the oil of God rests on him Apostle Hudson I declare he is my brother he serves the kingdom of God in the local church it's all one well, why y'all look so crazy it's all one family it's all one family it's all one family it's all it's all one family. It's all one family. Pastor Eric Thomas, my brother, we share in arms. We are part of the church, the Lord's church. Drop your weapons and worship him. Come on. Thank you. That's it. Holy Jesus. Holy Jesus. Holy Jesus. We move out the way. We move out the way. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Listen. Remain standing. You saying, Pastor? I want to be a part of this local church. Please hear me. 
I know it's gonna sound contradictory I'm gonna tell you the truth because I love Jesus this is not the only God fearing church in Chicago I know you thought it was just us I got good news for you it is not just us there are hundreds if not thousands of churches that God loves and moves through in this city there are but if today something in you connected at what's going on here I want you to come down this aisle and be a part of this local church all nations do me a favor ask the person next to you say you got a church home come on ask them all nations come on ask them come on ask them come 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 on come on come on you're not joining a perfect church you're joining a postured church you're saying pastor I'm already a part but I need to know Jesus if you don't know Jesus in the pardoning of your sins come ask your neighbor do you know Jesus come on ask him go ahead ask him do you know Jesus come come hear me if you have fallen away you've backslidden you've regressed you and God got into it it was more you than him I promise you that because if God gets into it with you that's it <laughs> you don't live to tell the story if if you felt disappointed I stumbled on something Jordan last time we had midweek the Lord told me my people think I owe them an apology he says son you got to remind them I'm never wrong and I can't break the pattern I am not a man that I would lie just because you ain't seen it don't mean I lied so if I apologize then I'm not omniscient all-knowing and if I apologize for that then I'm not God and we might as well go downtown and have whatever we need take a deep breath he's never going to apologize he arrogant no he's not wrong and if he apologizes then it is submitting that your will is right over his so I need you to reconcile that if God didn't do what I wanted or needed or felt was best he knows what's better now hold on right there if God did not do what you felt was best he knows what's better his plan is better than best even when what you think is best brings you peace and comfort and God says I love you enough to teach you how to sleep through storms Quez asked me today he said pastor did the storm wake you up I almost laughed and it was I almost told him man I've been sleeping through storms the last two years I've had to learn how to have peace with loud thunder so an environmental storm I said please if you don't get what you think is best God knows trying to bring you into better all right so if you've backslidden and I, and it, that makes you nervous let me find another term if you're not as close to Jesus as you once were you don't pray anymore you don't read anymore you don't even you don't even turn on the gospel station you just turn I don't want to listen to no Christian music give me Meg the stallion tell the truth you just stallion them down if that's you hear me you can come closer now here's what's gonna keep you from coming fear is gonna say you just gonna backslide again and you know what I'm gonna walk right down that aisle again <laughs> I grew up in an old Pentecostal church and they would say hold on to the horns of the altar all the way to heaven 
<laughs> if that's you, come. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Come on, be bold. Say, neighbor. Do you need to get closer to Jesus? If they say yes or they blink or wink, that's their way. Walk with them. Come on, come. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Come on, you can bounce back from anything. Come on. Come on. Let us see Jesus. Come. Let us see Jesus. Come. Let us see Jesus. This is why we have church. Let us see Jesus. Come. Let us see Jesus. Hear me. Please hear me. Some of you will walk down the altar and your altar will be the person you've been fighting with. Jesus said, don't get mad at me, get mad at the pattern. Amen. They're coming. Come. Clap those hands, all nations. Jesus said, if you got an issue with your brother, leave your little gift at the altar. Go to the personal one-on-one -on -one altar call with them and get it right. Don't get mad at me. Talk to the pattern. That's another thing that I sense prophetically, Prophet Arian. You weigh it and judge it and you tell me what you think. This is what I felt like I heard the Lord say. You all need to get used to clapping for the people you deemed as villains. Oh, I know. You hear them, uh, it's not Harold's, Pastor Teresa. What's the other one? Gus Grushers. You hear them Uncle Remus claps? Watch and see. If who you deemed as villain does not walk down those aisles and rejoin this church. I know you're mad now. Don't get mad at me, get mad at the pattern. Did Saul turn into Paul or not? Did Peter preach the greatest revival at Pentecost after he betrayed Jesus and his disciples or not? You watch before the year is over we will see those that we will have to say surely the hand of God is on them too point at your seat and say I'm ready for you to come back home come on point at that seat and tell them I'm ready for you to come back home there's still a seat for you okay amen we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen 13. Clap your hands for all 13. New family, 14. All 14. New family members. People that accepted Jesus and those that have turned from backslidden ways. I said clap those hands. It's a part of the pattern. Hallelujah. Let it be Jesus. Do me a favor. Turn to your left, to my right. Please follow the gentlemen whose hands are up. They're going to take you to some next steps. Come on, all nations, clap your hands for them. They're going. It's my prayer for you. My prayer is that after that conversation, you want to be a part of the Lord's church. No matter what your local participation is in the Lord's church, just get in one. If you are part of All Nations Chicago, make sure that your connectivity and your participation is unto the Lord. We're going to see phenomenal things break out. Now, if you didn't get an opportunity to sow, I want to give you that chance right now. That's All Nations WA to 77977. Again, that's All Nations WA to 77977. If this is your week to tithe, we want to encourage you to do so. Something beautiful is happening in this church. Don't miss a moment of it. We'll see you next week. Peace.